Hello and welcome to Expats Everywhere. If you could, please tell us your name, where you're from, and a little about yourself. My name is Becky, I'm from California, and uh, I'm an ESL teacher. That's awesome. So, if you could, tell us what countries have you worked in? I worked in Saudi Arabia and Vietnam. Okay, well, what was it like working in Vietnam? Vietnam was awesome. Um, it's definitely a very laid-back community. Um, it takes a lot of adapting at first because it's kind of a, um, well, it's just very different from home, let's put it like that. Okay. Um, but it was a great experience. The opportunities are, um, are not hard to come by and it's very inexpensive. So all in all, it was a good experience. Cool. And how did you end up in Vietnam? Uh, funny story, actually. I went for a month-long vacation, um, packed a bunch of bikinis and sarongs, and then um, two weeks in, I fell in love with it, and I started searching for some jobs online with the Dave's ESL Cafe and landed a summer job. Very nice. So how long were you there in total? Uh, in total, six months. Six months. Okay. So it was enough time. Do you feel it was enough time to kind of get... Uh, a good perspective of the country? I think so. Um, obviously, more time would probably, I, I would have learned some more Vietnamese than uh -huh. uh, just the numbers. But uh, it was definitely enough time to get a feel for the country, get a feel for the cuisine, the people, and um, I, I did get a, a bit of traveling in during that time. Cool. What city were you based in? Um, so I worked in two different locations in those six months. Um, I got a summer job teaching um, in the north, in Hanoi, in the capital. And then um, I really wanted to go back to the resort town, um, smaller place called Na Chang. Um, kind of hard to find work as an ESL teacher. There are very few expats, um, working expats. It's more of a retirement community and, um, and a resort beach town. So, um, but I worked in, I guess, Central Coast and also in the capital. Okay, well, as you know it, what are some jobs that English-speaking expats can do in Vietnam? So, um, obvious ESL jobs. Um, yeah. In Southeast Asia, you have a lot of private ESL um, English um, schools. And so, in the summer, there's just a ton of jobs for summer school. Um, they don't really keep their kids on break. They like to keep them studying. So, um, tons of summer programs. And then, um, year-round, also at the at the at the public schools, but um, mostly private English schools. Um, I do have a lot of friends that continued on and have been in um, Ho Chi Minh now for about two years, and they're working for a university, uh, it's an Australian uh, university that's based in Ho Chi Minh, and they do um, like a preparatory English uh, for university students. Okay, so, very cool. And are there any jobs outside of ESL that you know of? Um, I did meet a couple of expats that um, worked in marketing and, um, um, of course, um, entrepreneurs, um, people that are starting their own businesses. Sure. Um, people who are traveling through just backpacking tend to get jobs at restaurants and bars, kind of promoting and um, working for dive centers. So definitely, uh, it's, it's just an easy place to find work. Um, of course, it uh, depends on you know, how much you're looking to make. Okay. Well, if you could tell us, what did a typical day look like for you at typical work? Typical day at work. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, uh, for the English, the, the, the two jobs I had were quite different. So for the English program, summer program, that was um, teaching young learners. Um, we would go in about 8 a.m., uh, plan some classes. We had, I had about three different classes, about an hour and a half each. Um, classes ranged in age from five to six to seven, eight, and I even had some teenagers. Um, so all in all, I would say I was at the school maybe about six hours a day, seven hours a day, but um, only had about three contact, four contact hours a day, and that was Monday through through Friday. Okay, not bad. Um, how much can you expect to earn doing a job like this? Um, well, actually, I was quite surprised when I got there. This uh, summer program that I worked for, it was for a school called Language Link, mm -hmm. and we made about um, almost $2,000 per month, which is a lot for, for Vietnam. Um, I think hourly, if you, there's, there, are, there are plenty of jobs that are hourly paid, um, either private tutoring or part-time at English centers. Um, they pay about $15 to $20 an hour. 
So the going rate is it's quite good for ESL, um, and obviously you don't need much to get by there. Right, okay. Um, so do you think this money is enough, and what kind of lifestyle can you live on this type of money? Um, yes, I felt like a millionaire. <laughs> no, when I had that, when I got paid um, for for that particular job, that was um, definitely enough to to get by in the capital. Um, rent was about two fifty, two hundred and fifty dollars um, for a shared house. Um, transportation was maybe fifty dollars a month, and then whatever you spend on food, and um, and then of course whatever you decide to do for your leisurely activity activities. But um, yeah, you get by quite well. You could probably save a thousand dollars a month easily. Very nice. Okay. Well, so you said that you didn't go there with the plan of of finding a job. Um, so how much do you think someone would need to start up? So if they're ready to move, how much would they need to move there with? How much money? Well, airfare. Um, which sometimes um, some schools will, will reimburse you for. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, when I went to Vietnam, I had accommodation paid for when I was going for vacation, but I only brought $300. Wow. So uh, that was for a month, and that's just with accommodation already paid. So um, usually they'll put you into, they'll, they'll have some kind of housing allowance for you if you don't have um, accommodation yet. So when I went up to Hanoi, they they provided a hotel for the first few days until I got settled, and um, I mean, I really would say you would need maybe to be comfortable and not be worried. Uh, maybe five, six hundred dollars. Uh, of course, that's not including your airfare. Okay. Would you recommend that someone lines up a job before they come, or be like you and just show up and, and hope for the best? Um, you know, I would say do your research. Um, there are definitely, like Language Link was, is a big school. They have centers in uh, major cities. Um, also Apollo, you'll see a lot of postings online for that. And they were, they're were they decent schools, but there are a lot of other opportunities. Um, so I feel like, you know, to land the best job for you, you'd probably have to be in country to, to feel that out. But um, obviously uh, going with something planned would be, wouldn't be a terrible idea. Okay, great advice. Um, next question is, how should someone pack when they move to Vietnam, and what's the weather like? Okay, it's hot, and <laughs> it's humid. Um, when I went, obviously I went on vacation, so just um, shorts and tank tops, but um, I had to do a lot of shopping, um, kind of beef up my wardrobe when I got the job, and um, you know, really, you can wear anything professional, um, long skirts, if you're a female, uh, I would suggest some skirts because it is it is quite hot. Um, they do keep it nice and air-conditioned at the newer, nicer schools, but I worked for the second job I had was a Vietnamese-run school that was not so, um, I guess, air-conditioned. Um, sometimes it just wouldn't work. So always be prepared for that. Um, short sleeves are fine, so uh, wear what makes you comfortable and uh, anything cool because it is it does get very hot. Okay. Um, great advice there. Let me ask you this. What are some things that you can't find in Vietnam that maybe you missed or that, that you should bring from your home country? That's kind of hard to think about, actually. I, I don't recall ever needing anything from home, but um, I mean, you have, I mean, food wise, you have great options. Um, it will be hard to find anything Western. That is really hard to find. So if you have that favorite hot sauce from home that you want, then definitely bring that. Um, peanut butter is kind of hard to find. Those kind of staple foods that are typically American, um, I, I definitely bring that. But you can definitely find Vegemite if you're Australian. That, okay. So that they have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, were there anything? Uh, were there any items of clothing for women that were difficult to find, or sizes that were difficult to find for for men or women? Uh, yeah, for women, um, shoes. If you have large feet, like larger than a size eight, difficult to find. Um, clothes in general just seem to fit a lot smaller. Um, Vietnamese women are very petite, so um, finding if you have a, you know a certain bra size that is already kind of difficult to find, uh, definitely would 
bring plenty of um, undergarments with you because even the underwear was really hard to shop for that. Um, they just are very small. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these are things that people definitely need to know mm -hmm. before they move. Otherwise, they're going to be scrambling. All right, let's move on. Can you tell us uh, about safety? How safe is it there? And did you feel safe personally? Did you have any episodes? Um, no, I, I feel very safe. I felt very safe in Vietnam. It, um, it's definitely a very warm, welcoming culture. Um, I had one incident one time, and that was, I was out very, very late in the old quarter in Hanoi, and it's kind of the downtown, um, you know, dirtier area of town in some at some times of the day. And so at three in the morning, definitely not a place. But then I had been there, you know, multiple times after that incident and nothing, nothing happened. So someone just tried to steal my purse, um, no violence or anything. So I mean, you might, you need to watch your bags. Um, that's one thing I always heard. Um, you usually ride a scooter uh, mm -hmm. in Vietnam. And so women tend to bring their purses on their, on their shoulder or on a, like a backpack, and you kind of want to stay away from that and hide them under your, your scooter. But that was the only thing that, that really um, I felt unsafe about, I guess. Okay. Um, how did you meet people? Uh, going out. Yeah, it's actually in Hanoi, you'd be surprised. It's a capital, but it's very small, uh, a very small, close-knit uh, expat community. So. Um, there are certain areas of the city where it's just you can you know see foreigners and other ESL teachers and everyone seems to be interconnected and it's um, it's not you don't feel isolated there so it's it's definitely a nice community easy to make friends um, and it's nice because in Hanoi or in Ho Chi Minh you have people that are working there so it's not so transient of a community like backpackers just passing through. Um, so it is, it's definitely a nice place to make friends. Um, just going out to restaurants or downtown, you'll meet Vietnamese friends and uh, friends from all over the world. Okay, great. So what can people do for fun in Vietnam? Oh, for fun. Um, you know, Vietnam, Vietnam is very, uh, it's a coffee culture. So going out to cafes, um, it's not uncommon for a group of friends. Um, if you're going to hang out with Vietnamese friends, expect them to take you out uh, to coffee. Um, and obviously with expats, um, there's always something going on in the evenings, um, bands are playing, and um, it's a very lively place at night. Um, also, any weekend trips, weekend trips are a great way to spend your time, and if you live in the north, there are tons of places um, out in the countryside and um, on the beaches, and so, and from Ho Chi Minh as well, you can go to the beach very easily, so lots of outdoor, uh, outdoor activities. Activities. Wow, sounds really cool. Um, do you think that Vietnam is a good travel hub for uh, the rest of Asia and even different parts of the world? Why or why not? Definitely for Southeast Asia, it's you know it's just part of the trail. So um, you'll see backpackers constantly flowing through there, and it's so much fun to hear you know their stories where they've been, and um, yeah, it's a great travel hub for that part of the world. I don't find it so interconnected uh, to other areas, but um, I mean, if you're interested in traveling to Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, um, Malaysia, it's a great place to be located for that. Okay, cool. Well, if you could, tell us uh, what are the pros and the cons of living in Vietnam? Pros, it's very cheap. You can have a great time, uh, meet tons of people, be very social. Um, cons, it's hard to focus on work. <laughs> okay, why do you say that? <laughs> because there's always something going on and people are always inviting you to do things and it's so inexpensive that you don't really have an excuse other than, oh, I have class at 8 a.m. So sometimes it's hard to kind of buckle down and, and stay focused. But um, it's definitely, and as I said before, you know, you have the mix of the of the backpackers and the travelers with people that work there. So it's hard to kind of keep the lines of traveling and working separate. Right. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. So work culture wise, uh, is there a lot of pressure for you to buckle down and, and put your head down and work hard? What's that like? Um, you know, and for, for the summer programs, I feel like they understand that people are here there uh, to 
they're, they're here to experience Vietnam and they, they understand that it's summer, you know, so they don't take that program as seriously as they do year round, I'd imagine. Okay. Um, but I'm not quite sure, you know, of other, maybe at the university level, things would be a little different. I know my friend that's working there, um, they do focus a lot more on professional development. Uh, but even when I was in the summer program, yeah, they, they check on you, they, they evaluate your classes and you go through a series of hoops um, for them to kind of make sure that you are you're, you're handling your workload. Okay, uh, could you see yourself going back there to work yes. in the future? Yes. yes. Have you made plans to do it? Or? Uh, not yet. I've uh, looked into my friend who's working at that Australian university, so um, she's looking She's looking into that. I think they're doing hiring next year, but I would definitely return to Vietnam. Um, the pay was great and the experience was great. I, I feel at home there. You know? Okay, very cool. Becky, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us at Expats Everywhere and wish you the best in the future. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye.